Maybe maybe we can start soon. I mean, I, I'm assuming that this would be more interactive. Is uh, maybe mm -hmm. exactly. I think you know more interactive. Uh, the more interactive, the better. Right, right. Because I mean, I don't have something prepared because, you know, it's like I wasn't really sure how to talk about it. But uh, yeah, mostly talk about media, which I think everybody is <laughs> watching all the time right now. So maybe I can ask questions uh, first. Yeah. Like, what are you guys watching? Can you tell me? What are you watching on like Netflix, Amazon? Mm -hmm. Are you watching anything? Maybe what we can do is um, we can call them one by one. They can okay. uh, say their tell name. Me. Right. where they are from uh, and then okay. what they're watching. Okay. And maybe Perfect. I can facilitate that. Okay, let's do um, that. Um, okay, I guess I can go first. Um, so I'm Mina, I'm in 10th grade and I'm from Fairfax, Virginia. So just outside of DC. Mm -hmm. And right now, actually I've been watching a lot of Turkish TV shows. Oh, so okay. that's been, I'm really enjoying them. Like what, which one are you which watching? Uh, Kara Sevda. Oh, okay. Okay, <laughs> great. It's a good way to practice your Turkish too. Okay, great. Okay, um, I guess Sandro can go next. Hi, uh, I'm Sandro Garcia. Uh, I'm in 10th grade and I'm from Illinois. And right now uh, I just started Black Mirror. Oh, great. Where, where is that playing? Which, is it Netflix? Or? Yeah, I, I'm watching that on Netflix. Oh, okay. Yeah, I like Black Mirror. Okay. Um, Dila B, Dila Bostanja. Hi, my name is Dila Bostanja. I'm in 11th grade and I live in Washington State. And the most recent thing I watched on Netflix was Emily in Paris. Oh, okay. I watched that too. Okay, cool. Me too, by the way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Pelin. Hi, I'm Pelin Altenpush. Um, I'm a junior at Quince Orchard High School, which is in Gaithersburg, Maryland. Um, I recently, I watched The Protector uh, when it first came out, but I never had a chance to finish it. So now um, I'm two seasons in. <laughs> So okay. That. Um, Toprak. Okay, yeah, that is me. I am Toprak Yildirim. I live in the Seattle area, and I've been watching American Dad for a while now. <laughs> and my son likes that too. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, Akin. Uh, I'm Akin. I'm from Denver, Colorado, and I've been watching Queen's Gambit recently. Oh, it's a great series. Great. Okay. Dennis. Hello, I'm Dennis Sehan. I'm a freshman, and I live in Northern Virginia. I've been re-watching Community on Netflix. Hmm. I don't know that show. Okay, great. Alara. Bala Saigon. Hi, I'm Alara, and I'm from Irvine, California. Um, recently, I've been watching The Crown. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dila Arat. Hi, my name is Dila, and I live in Northern Virginia. Um, I've been recently watching Queen's Gambit. Okay, great. Uh, Ella. Ella, um, I'm from Virginia, and I've been watching The Office. Oh, my son is obsessed with that too, okay. Eran. Hi, my name is Eden. I'm a ninth grader from New Jersey, and right now I'm watching Parks and Rec. Mm, okay. Damla. Hi, I'm Damla. Um, I'm in 11th grade. I'm from Arlington, and I have been watching uh, Bly Manor. Mm, okay. Noel. Hi, I'm Noel. I'm a senior, and I also just started watching The Crown. Okay, great. Alston. My name is Alston. I'm a junior from Maryland, and I just finished watching Avatar The Last Airbender. Oh, great. Okay. 
Alara Altenbush. Hi, I'm Alara. I'm a sophomore from New York, and I'm also rewatching The Office. Mm. <laughs> Alia. Hi, I'm Alia. I'm a senior from Washington State, and I'm also rewatching The Office too. Office wow. Of okay, it's so funny. What is this? I have my son is always like showing me little snippets of The Office. Everybody's watching, rewatching that. That's cool. Okay. Alara Stewart. Hi, my name is Alara. I'm a sophomore. I'm uh, from St. Louis, Missouri, and I'm watching the new season of The Crown. Oh, right, okay. Uh, John? Hi, I'm John Tunnel. I also go to Quinn's Orchard High School, and um, I'm a senior, and I also started watching The Crown as well. So probably like I'm the fourth person. Wow, yeah, cool, okay. Uh, and Zane. Uh, hi, I'm Zane. I'm a sophomore, and uh, I don't really watch TV shows that much, but I like watching Stranger Things. Oh, yes, I love that. The fourth season is coming up soon. Which one is it? Uh, Stranger Things. Oh, yes, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, did I miss anyone? Okay. Um, okay. I guess we can continue now. Okay, you guys are all great. Well, I'm right now based in Los Angeles. I see there's somebody from Irvine in California. So I'm three hours ahead of you guys. Um, but I'm also, um, I also live and work in Istanbul as well. Um, and then before the pandemic, I mean, it was like I had all these other projects in Istanbul, London here, but now with the pandemic, things have slowed down a little bit, uh, especially the shooting. But pretty much, um, I guess that from what I'm hearing, most of you guys are watching Netflix or maybe a little bit of Amazon, some of the old shows. Uh, but in the last couple of years, media has changed so much. I mean, you wouldn't probably remember that till about three, four years ago, everybody watched like either HBO or, you know, and then it was like every week. So this whole concept of binge watching and Netflix and all that is really quite new. I mean, it's really the last like four years. So media in my lifetime, um, I, I feel like in the last five years has changed so much. I mean, everything about uh, even making, you know, films and series uh, and the way, um, even the way everything can be seen globally at the same time. I mean, these are all incredibly new. Uh, five years ago, this type of stuff didn't exist. Like you would have a series here and then the, the company would sell it to different countries. So you wouldn't like Netflix, you wouldn't be able to see it at the same time all over the world, you know? So that's, that's something very new and in, in many ways quite exciting that you have access to uh, material, to content from all over the world. And, uh, but it also of course creates some challenges uh, because of that too. So the rules of media are being rewritten as we speak. Um, so are there, I mean, are there any questions or which part of like media or making a series that you guys are interested in um, that I should talk about? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe while they are um, thinking, I can uh, briefly introduce you. Of course, uh, oh. we, we introduced um, you before. Uh, they know who you are, but just to give a little bit more uh, maybe background. So um, Binur Karevli is an award-winning director, producer uh, with an expansive background in film and video and theater. Uh, she was um, born and raised in Istanbul, um, although you're from Tekirda, which is yes. uh, <laughs> also from my hometown. Yes, yes. 
and uh, she attended Robert College High School in Istanbul. Um, she received her BFA from the Carnegie Mellon University in Drama and started her career as a theater director in 1989. And then you had an extensive uh, career in theater um, yeah. in DC, LA, in different in San Diego. Um, and then um, you know you started uh, making films, documentaries. And, I um, actually went to USC film school for my master's. Okay. So um, after graduating from undergrad uh, theater directing and writing, then I had uh, these internships. And one of the most memorable one was at the arena stage in Washington, DC. I lived in Maryland in Bethesda for about six months. And I was an assistant director. I, I'm sure some of you might have seen shows at the arena stage, but that was a great experience. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And um, some of your most known films are um, Dance of the Whirling Dervish, Evelyn of the Desert, and of course the um, Eye of Istanbul, which uh, received many international awards. Right. And uh, most recently, and most well known in the popular culture, at least, is the Protector the prote yes. uh, in Netflix. And you were the executive uh, producer. Yeah, I was the writer, executive yeah. producer, writer, creator. Yes, yes. Wow, so that that's was fascinating. <laughs> that was a that was a great experience, and it was a very difficult experience too, because it was the first Turkish language Netflix show. So, because of that, of course, there were a lot of when you do something first, you know, you're the first one. Then, till you really create a system, it's always hard. Even the amount of translation is uh, was really, really tough, you know, the translation, because we, we were doing the show in Turkish, and then everything had to be translated for the American executives. And just even that, and the fact that in Turkey, in the entertainment industry, there are not that many people who are bilingual, you know, there are not that many people who are fluent in English and Turkish. So that was really, um, that was a challenge as well. <laughs> so, so now, I mean, we did the first one and the, the shows that came after, of course, there's a little bit of a prototype now. So it's easier, but for us, it was like uncharted territory. Mm -hmm. Wow, amazing. Yeah, and you know, the Turkish TV series, one of you, I think it was Mina who said you were watching the Turkish TV series are incredibly popular. I mean, they are very popular in Eastern Europe, in the Middle East, uh, in, you know, many, many different countries. A lot of the Turkish TV series have become incredibly popular, which is a great way to actually introduce the culture, Latin America and Brazil and Argentina. A lot of the Turkish TV series play there. The actors have become popular and people know something about Turkish culture through the series actually. So um, that has been really great. So, but you said, although we have this, um, you know, infrastructure to make mm -hmm. these great um, Turkish series, um, making a show for Netflix uh, is different. Right. Um, it, 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 yeah, it was different because, you know, if, if you guys have seen the Turkish series, the Turkish TV series are much longer. They're like one episode is more than two hours, like it's two and a half hours even. So that, you know, to write that, to direct that, it's, it's a different thing because in one week you have to direct um, almost like a feature. So a lot of the people in Turkey are really used to, you know, writing and directing and even acting in these Turkish TV series. Now, they're very good, but it's a different style, you know, like to be able to shoot this, 
they have to have long, you know, they're looking at each other for a long time, you know, the eyes and the music and it goes into, so there's like five minutes of two lovers looking at each other, you know, but they have to do that because otherwise they cannot shoot it in one week, you know, if you did all the action things. So because of that, I think when we were doing Protector in 2000, 18, uh, two years ago, it was really tough to switch gears for a lot of the people, even for the actors, because we were doing something 40 minutes. So that was one of the challenges too, that the stylistic um, difference. Um, and then, you know, uh, in Turkey, in the series, people are not used to working with uh, different directors. I mean, so there were all kinds of things that were differently done in Turkey. So that's why it was a challenge. Mm -hmm. But you did very well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, people adapt and right now both happens, you know, there are a lot more Netflix series like that. There's also like Blue TV and a bunch of other companies that do, you know, regular uh, series, and then the Turkish series are happening as well. So I guess uh, <laughs> both different styles can uh, live side by side. Um, I mean, I have a couple of questions, but sure. please jump in, uh, everybody. If you have any questions, raise a hand or you can type it in the chat box. Oh, somebody um, you can, oh yeah, you can type it. Yeah, yeah. The, uh. <laughs> um, for instance, I read somewhere that um, with um, Netflix now going local mm -hmm. and making all these um, local TV shows and then making it available all around the world uh, mm -hmm. simultaneously, the, um, the business of, uh, you know, uh, dubbing that, you know, in the, remember in the old movies, you know, we had these great um, dubbers in Turkey. I mean, they would, um, mm -hmm. um, they had even special actors and actresses who lived mm -hmm. on that. And now for a while, apparently that business was going down, but now I hear that it's coming back up because, um, you know, with Netflix producing these hundreds of, you know, thousands of shows. They right. need, um, Dubbers. Who can dub, exactly. Right. But you know, like, for example, The Protector, I mean, on Netflix, I sometimes watch shows from other countries, you know, like French or Mexican or, or um, like Japanese, Korean. And I never watch it dubbed because like I know from the dubbing of Protector, like English dubbing, I thought was terrible. I mean, mm. it was just like, beyond, I don't know how the Spanish dubbing was, but I feel like, yes, I mean, there's more and more dubbing because some people don't like the subtitles, but it just, you know, it's, it's never the same. It's always mm -hmm. so much better to hear it in its original language. And with the subtitles, after a while, you just sort of get used to it if you get into the um, you know, content. So yes, now there is, uh, like for example, our show Protector was dubbed into many different languages like German, um, um, Spanish, you know, of course, English and a bunch of other languages. So they do a lot of dubbing now. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody said, are there any possible internships or jobs for high school students interested in becoming screenwriters in which they can work on the development of a real show? Um, I mean, yes, of course there are. In Turkey, the idea of, in Turkey there are interns too. We actually did use some interns during the protector. Um, and it just all depends on like when and who's doing the show. Uh, and here there are some internships here too because I'm like working on a, on a, project for US 
and UK right now. But right now with the COVID, it's it's so hard. <laughs> you know, there's like all the big studios here. They have internship departments. I'm sure Netflix has one too. So if you guys are interested, you should uh, send them letters, you know. Maybe on that um, note, you know, as somebody who has been in this field, who has accomplished all that um, you have, um, can you tell us about your career journey? I mean, did you know what you wanted to do exactly when you were a high school student? Was that an iterative process? Um, um, you know, yeah, what was, sure. What went through in your mind and... Uh, and I then, did, you know. actually. I did. I mean, I was, I would say that I'm probably cursed and lucky. <laughs> Mixed <laughs> blessings. I, I mean, I think that I knew when I was like 12, you know, that I really wanted to be a writer, you know, and then it evolved to being a director also. Like, even when I was in middle school, I was always in doing theater club. Uh, things and then high school I was always like the drama club I wrote my own play and so I, I really I knew I mean I it was a passion for me because especially I think in our field I mean it's very hard yes there's a lot of glamour you know sometimes like, you know you're like yes on my Instagram I have pictures with some famous actors too but as 95% of it is quite hard work and and uh it's not something that that you could deal with if you don't feel passionately enough, uh, especially in our field, because there's so much rejection, there's so much personal struggle, you know, uh, because actors, directors, writers, you all have your projects, you have like 10 projects you want to do and that only one of them happens. And so it's, it's a emotionally, difficult um, business as well. But yes, I mean, I, I was passionate about it. So first I studied theater directing and writing, and then I worked, uh, I did internships at the arena stage, Los Angeles Theater Center. So I did all these internships. Then I started my own little theater company. And then I went to USC film school for graduate school. So I, you know, I did the step by step, like, uh, you know, internships, assistantships, things like that. But now, I mean, I think that now things are much more different, especially the access to equipment. I mean, you can really make a film, you know, with your iPhone. <laughs> I mean, you can have an editing system. I mean, things have, have so quickly changed. So now you can do so much if you're passionate about like filmmaking, um, you can make your own film, submit it. So, so now there's like uh, so many more venues for young people. We have one more uh, question. What what brought you to becoming a producer director? When did you get interested? Yeah, I mean, I actually, um, I mean, I'm also a writer and I really, really enjoy uh, writing as much as almost directing. And right now, all I'm doing, especially with the pandemic, is I'm working on, on, a, on a new show um, that I don't know where it's going to be. It's a, it's a big uh, American company that commissioned it. So I'm, I'm writing and I just, I think that I was like interested in it since, as I said, um, uh, since I was young. What is your favorite show movie that you've produced? Well, I mean, I, I think that for me, Protector, so far. <laughs> I really enjoyed doing The Protector. And it was hard because it was the first superhero um, show in Turkey and, and people just hadn't done that before. And I really thought that it would be interesting to have that for young viewers, especially. I mean, 
Netflix has a lot of young viewers to see like a, a, a superhero show coming from Turkey. And, um, and we had a lot of history in it too. And like all the other historical shows were just like all the historical characters looked so like serious. And in ours, we had like uh, Mamet the Conqueror and he was like very cool. And we had them all in leather and like, I really wanted it to appeal to young people. So, um, so far it's my favorite. Okay, let's see any, any other. Okay, was there any special moment when you were younger that made you really want to be a producer or was it more of a slow rise in interest? Um, well, I mean, let me just clarify this as a producer. I mean, executive producer is usually a title given to people in TV who create and who write or who direct. Um, so I... I mean, I'm not that much interested in like finding the money, being that type of a producer. You know, there are producers who just find the money or find the, uh, like they do the business side. So uh, for me, especially being a female, like when I went to USC film school, there was five boys, one girl, <laughs> no, five men, one woman. Initially, the women, we all thought it was great dating opportunity, but of course that wasn't the case. <laughs> all the guys were just so, um, they were very geeky. But anyway, um, so things really, I mean, as a female filmmaker, sometimes you really had to create or advocate for your own project. So that was one of the reasons why I also produce my own things. Let's see. Uh, how were the ideas developed for The Protector? What sparked this idea of the show? Okay, Payland, that's a great question. Um, you know, before doing The Protector, I had read this book. Uh, the book was called like Black Pen or something, and it had just come out. And when I read it, I felt like it was kind of a Turkish imitation of Harry Potter. Uh, but the only, the only thing that I really, really liked about the book was that there was, there was this uh, uh, shirt, talismanic shirt, that was magical in the book. And I thought that's such an authentic, you know, like we've seen Excalibur, the magical sword. I mean, we've seen so many other elements from all these Western uh, series, but this whole idea of the talismanic shirt is actually real. If you guys have been to the um, palace in Istanbul, you know, there are actually these shirts from like 13th, 14th century, 13th century that were um, made specifically for the sultans and nobody has deciphered the writings on them yet, you know, so there is an actual thing. So I love that about the book that there's this magical shirt that the hero inherits and it gives some superpowers. So that's how, so I optioned the book, but then we just took the book and I mean, just took the shirt and just changed everything else about it. But that's how the idea came about. Okay, so if you could change anything, show that to make it work. Oh my God, <laughs> Mina, if you could change anything, and I'm, you know, like I watch everything I do later and I'm always cringing and I'm always thinking if we had more money in the budget or if that actor didn't like, wasn't drunk that day or if, or if we had more time with the script. I mean, as a, as a creator, you always think that, but at some point, you know, it is what it is, nothing is perfect. Perfect. So what kind of projects you're working on now and what are your plans for near and far future? Um, 
Well, because I did the uh, protector, now everybody sends me these superhero books from Turkey, especially. But now I'm working on several different projects. I mean, I'm really actually, you know, my son is 14. I'm really interested in uh, projects for young people. So I have one project that's about a uh, junior in high school. Um, that takes place in Turkey. So that's that. And I'm also commissioned to work on a historical, a historical project from the UK, from London. And then I'm also working on a crime. I'm commissioned, meaning somebody hired me to work on a crime show. And I also have a, like a drama that I'm working on. Okay. Oh, you have such a wide range of... Uh topics you cover except for horror somebody's <laughs> watching Bly Manor I can't even watch I don't one of you guys who are watching that I can't even watch horror I think other than horror uh -huh. I'm interested in all any uh, all the other genres is there anyone you look up to in the film industry of course I mean I I mean, classic people, of course, I mean, Martin Scorsese, people like that, of course, I look up to. But I also think that there are some great um, TV writers, producers that I really like. I think the person who did The Queen's Gambit, he's a very uh, well-known um, writer. I love, I mean, I love The Queen's Gambit. I thought that was really good. I think the guy, Peter Morgan, who's done The uh, the Crown. So people like that, I really look up to also. Okay, let me see. Uh, in your opinion, what's the best for me? <laughs> Sandro, I don't know. I have so many. What is your, okay, this question is to Sandro. What is the best movie in your opinion? Is he answering or? Is I honestly he... don't yeah. know, but like, I think a really, like, really, really good one is The Godfather. Specifically oh, yes. One and three. Yes, yes. Um, the first one. Yeah, The Godfather is great. I mean, there are, you know, if you, like, sometimes I give screenwriting uh, classes, or I used to do that more in Turkey before uh, before the protector, because I really do love also sharing the craft. And I would always make everybody make a list of their top 10 uh, like movies that they think are classic. I mean, the reason why a movie becomes a classic is that even though, you know, 30 years, 40 years goes by, it's still, you can still watch it and enjoy it. So then I compile all these lists, but yes, definitely Godfather. I think the original Star Wars are their classic, you know, um, but I have like such a long list of, you know, films. So let me see, what is the best pathway for young people to become someone like you, an award winner? Huh. Oh, also Citizen Kane. Yes, Orson Welles, Citizen Kane. Uh, I would also think that Lawrence of Arabia is a great movie, if you guys haven't seen that. I mean, there's also things like Shawshank Redemption, which always kind of makes my list. Um, uh, what is a, you know what? I think that um, the best pathway is to, like to make movies or to write. And then um, nowadays you don't even have to go to film school. I mean, of course, going, if you are really passionate about uh, screenwriting or filmmaking, going to film school gives you a kind of structure. Uh, but I just think that our, um, our business is such that you only learn by doing it. So I would just say, uh, do get internships, try to get uh, uh, assistantships, um, and then just, you know, um, do that. So who asked me that? Gamze, yeah. Just curious, is it harder for you to get started or keep going on making a movie or TV show? 
uh, which one is harder, movie or TV show? Um, you know, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, when you're working on a movie, like you're writing or directing or making it, it like starts and it ends, you know? It's like <laughs> two hours. So in some ways, it's, it's easier that way. The TV show is difficult because you really have to think about, you know, different seasons and uh, different things like how is the season going to end what's going to happen in the next season so in some ways I think um I think maybe making a series is more complicated I wouldn't say it's harder but it's more complicated uh who are some of the best actors to work with well I can say that in Turkey like Chaltai Ulusoy was really wonderful to work with. I think most of the actors um, in The Protector were really wonderful. Uh, Toprak says, Mina, are you asking about starting versus keeping momentum? Yeah, yeah so when you responded to Mina's question, uh, I, I just thought that she was asking something else, a question I also had, which okay, is- what, um, what is it? Is it- easier to you know come up with an idea or like keep a creative streak and like you know and keep momentum well with the series of course it's always hard to keep the momentum because especially if you're going to do multiple seasons i mean if you don't do four seasons that means your show isn't that successful i mean that's how like if it ends in two seasons that means people didn't really watch it so uh to keep the momentum going and to make seasons better is uh then you know you have to also make it better in some ways it's it's, it's harder uh, but in other ways to make a really good two-hour movie is not easy either so it's it's just a different type of structure dif different you know um, but it's I mean making a series is much more complicated much more time consuming and in some ways in some ways a much bigger um, how should I say, like a much bigger endeavor because there are so many different writers, directors. It's almost like an army of people that come and go, you know. That's, uh, has your son ever contributed? Yes, my son actually ended up playing in the, um, the Eye of Istanbul, the documentary about Aragular, by the way, it's a fun documentary. I mean, I it's not one of those boring, like people are like, this person was born in 1920. You know, like it wasn't like that. It was a very active uh, documentary with a lot of like um, uh, reenactments. And my son actually played young Aragular. So <laughs> yes, he contributed. What's your favorite location? Ah, oh, God, I like in LA, I filmed in many, many different places. In uh, Turkey, I filmed from Mardin to Konya to, I mean, I filmed everywhere. Uh, but Protector, we filmed mostly in Istanbul. I, I, you know what, we filmed in Bukada in the Princess Islands. And that was really a really lovely place to film. Uh, was he really in it? Who are you talking about? Oh, are you Your talking son. about my son? Yes. yes. <laughs> he played young Aragular when there was a scene there when Aragular was talking about uh, running away from school and going to see movies, you know. And my son played him and he would like sneak back into the movie booth and, and look at how the film was running. So yeah, he played that. Actually, Binder, I have a question. Uh, oh, and we also realized that Sandro saw the documentary. <laughs> uh, what do you think about it, Sandro? I'll ask my question later. I think it was like definitely like a lot like better than most documentaries I've watched because I think it was more enjoyable, definitely. Because first of all, like it's not like very uh, 
lame and just flat like most other documentaries. It's not like it doesn't take 10 years to finish. So, you know, I think it's because I don't really watch that much stuff because I get bored really easily. But like this was one thing that I actually could watch because like one, it was funny. And two, like it didn't take 30 million years. So that was, yeah. I think I take this as a great compliment. It wasn't <laughs> lame as the other documentaries. That, I think that I'm going to put that like on the website <laughs> by sound drawing. <laughs> Coming yeah. from a 10th grader. It's Absolutely. Uh, that, that's a great, uh, great. Uh, uh, no, but you know what? That was my intention. I mean, I just thought sometimes documentaries could be so boring. And I was like, I don't want to make something boring i just want to make something enjoyable entertaining um so <laughs> yes I'm, I'm glad you were going to ask me something Demet. oh yes so uh but uh while we're at it i think uh alara or pelin uh one of them said they watched the protector mm -hmm. the first two seasons at least was that you pelin so I also Some wanted to ask uh, your opinion on the protector. Um, I just don't say it wasn't as lame. <laughs> it wasn't as lame as the other series. Okay, thank you. Um, I really liked it because it was a show that it's a show that like really interests our age group as well because it's also like an Americanized version of a Turkish so show. So it's like a lot of Turkish American. Um, so like students our age or like young adults can really watch and enjoy it and it has a very interesting concept that like you don't really get out of other shows mm -hmm. so what do you, do you think about that Binder? did you like that great comment? I love that I love <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that was the whole purpose. And of course, you know, there are so many stories that can come out of Turkey, you know, it's a country with great stories. And one of the things that I really do not like, like in Turkey is that people always compare things, you know, like even to now, like they compare, oh, but this series is much more dramatic and serious. I mean, The Protector was never supposed to be like a very heavy drama. I mean, it was just supposed to be something, you know, action adventure uh, for young people uh, and, you know, something with magic uh, and more the magical shirt. So it was supposed to really um, target uh, audiences everywhere. And I have to say that so far, it's the only Turkish uh, show uh, on Netflix that has really crossed over like people from all over the world really watch it and I get a lot of comments from people from you know from UK, US, Latin America and Chaltai the lead guy has a huge following in Latin America in Brazil and, and Argentina so that also helps. Um, Gamza asked do you think there will be more shows like The Protector I mean, I'm hoping so, but I sometimes get a little bit discouraged because like people, I mean, in Turkey, it's all melodrama, like all the other series are either romantic comedy or melodrama. Um, and this like, I think that there's so much more room for other genres. So I hope that it, it, it happens, but Sometimes people are like, they always say, even for the protector, some people in Turkey, the young people really loved it. But some of the older people are like, well, it doesn't really speak to our culture. So I don't, you know, I don't know. I hope so. So, okay, now my question. Okay. Um, <laughs> It's uh, when we first started uh, this um, program, we had a session on civic engagement, grassroots uh, engagement. And this also happened when, um, you know, the, um, the issue between Azerbaijan and um, Armenia broke out. And there was a lot of, you know, of course, reference to the history between Turks and Armenians and 
of course, Turks uh, were always the bad guys in the US. Um, so, I mean, we talked about, you know, how we're not able to explain ourselves um, effectively or better uh, to the outside world. And um, for instance, your documentary, uh, The Eye of Istanbul, is about a Turkish Armenian legendary photographer. I mean, he's world known, he's a, an amazing guy, his art and his personality. And you made a documentary about it. And then The Protector, um, it also shows a different, like more fun, more maybe hip, uh, more adventurous side of uh, Turkey. I mean, it reflects the Ottoman sultans, not as serious, you know, um, boring guys, but kind of like cool guys with a cool shirt and everything. Uh, so do you think, uh, or how do you see your role or, or the role of media in changing the narrative or telling the narrative in a different way? Or how do you see your role particularly uh, in this regard? question but let me uh, i mean it's so interesting because especially uh california there's one person mm -hmm, from exactly. Irvine here but i i mean even like two weeks ago or something was my son's birthday so we mm -hmm. thought we would go uh out to dinner to an outside restaurant socially distanced and we ran into this huge protest and initially i thought it was like blm then i started hearing down with turkey and we're like oh my god what is that and it was a huge protest on hollywood boulevard um, an armenian pro protest and you know and my son has uh, he had gone to international school in Istanbul has a lot of Azeri friends mm -hmm. too so I mean we are especially in California that has a huge Armenian uh, population it's very pal palpable and I I mean I do think that in Turkey we really haven't been able to um, make any movies of merit uh, that deal with this issue, maybe a little bit even objectively, like we don't always have to prove that, you know, whatever, Turks are great, but, but even objectively, I think we haven't done much, I haven't seen much, and uh, frankly, I mean, I think that uh, everything about this whole Armenian issue is so explosive. Uh, I don't even know if you can do anything, but like when I did the, um, uh, the Eye of Istanbul, Aragüler himself, I tried to talk to him about him being Armenian and, and the, his family. He just really didn't want to get into this Armenian Turkish issue because I think he really wanted to keep his photography above that, you know, above this. Um, so, I mean, I think that shows like Protector uh, are important. I think other shows on Netflix or even the Turkish series, the melodramatic ones uh, that are selling to all these different countries are really important because it really, I think it's through the movies and series uh, that we get a sense of a culture. I mean, the reason why everybody knows about American culture is that we've, <laughs> we've seen so many American shows, American movies, it's like, so I think we have to do more and more, but there's a lot of censorship in Turkey right now tremendous censorship and I think that also is a little bit counterproductive you know because when there's so much censorship it's hard to do you know truthful shows so I'm just really hoping that it changes and I think as storytellers it's really important to do uh, like intimate truthful and good fun shows to show the Turkish culture, the great locations, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so something, let me see. Yeah, How do you questions. deal with negative reviews or just hate in general? <laughs> 
it's hard, you know, like I try not to, <laughs> but sometimes you see all these things like on, uh, you know, people write even about the protector. I mean, yes, so many people loved it, but there was just so many hateful comments too. And sometimes I, I would read it and I'd be like, oh my God. And then I, I just don't read it now. So because, because some people are just so like, I would never criticize even a film or a TV series that I see in such a terrible way because I know how much work goes into it. And nobody wants to do a bad show. Like everybody goes into it with all the best intentions but then sometimes you know the script isn't good the acting or something goes wrong so it's like people put effort you know so you should, I think that um, constructive criticism is really important um Pelin, you mentioned that Netflix shows are generally 45 minutes and other Turkish shows as long as a movie do you think that has an effect on the amount of people continually watching the show would you prefer oh of course i i mean i cannot can you imagine like two and a half hours i mean <laughs> i really i cannot watch i mean i skip you know because of my job i usually try to catch at least one episode of like turkish series also but i like skip it because two and a half hours it's, it's crazy. It just, because of that, the tempo is slower. It gets boring at times, you know, the Turkish series. And it's very hard on the actors, on the people that work on these shows, you know, to shoot these. I really hope that they become shorter. I think that's uh, all the questions so far. Any other any other questions? I have one more question. So you decided to be a writer and uh, you wanted to go into theater particularly uh, at a very young age, but also mm -hmm. uh, at a completely different era. I mean, now I hear from young people that they want to be writers, they want to be singers, they, they want to be in the movie business. But I mean, it's because they see that it's, I mean, the, the industry is much more accessible. Um, and there is there are so many more opportunities, I think. But when you wanted to go into this business, I mean, I don't think really many people in Turkey knew that this would even be a profession. Right. Uh, back then. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm older. I'm getting older. <laughs> Although I, no. I, I try to be young at heart and constantly follow what my son is doing <laughs> to, to stay on top of things. <laughs> but also, I mean, I, um, I mean, you're a visionary or you, you know, you followed your heart. And also because, I mean, the industry has changed so fast. So, so quickly. So yeah, basically, I mean, what inspired you? How did you get into this? What was I thinking? I was crazy. I should have, I should have become a lawyer or like a doctor or something. You, Many, know? you know, like, especially in Turkey, you have to be a doctor, engineer, uh, you know, <laughs> teacher, you know, some um, yeah, you know, more traditional. I, went to, I went to Robert College um, for middle school and high school, you know, it was really fashionable to go to, uh, to study like finance and economics. So pretty much all my best friends um, went to like Bosphorus University or to the US. Uh, to study finance, you know, and here I was like, once we first got out of uh, college, you know, we would always meet and everybody's like had these like banking jobs. And here I was still like schlepping scenery, you know, like do working on like movies and not making much money, you know, interning and they were all like cool and, you know, but then like 10 years later, they had all like hated their jobs they're like what are we doing we hate being a banker and most of them actually quit 
Um, you know, I mean, I think that is really important. I mean, more and more, <sighs> work becomes so much a part of your life that to find something you're passionate about is, I think, key. I mean, that for all of you guys who are in high school, and I'm sure soon going to start thinking about colleges and apply and stuff like that. I think that, you know, for me, what I find is that most of our lives are consumed also by the work that we do. So it's so important that it's something that you truly enjoy. I mean, this, of course, money is important. Of course, people thinking you're great or be having, you know, people recognizing you or whatever, like all those things are great. But at the end of the day, if what you do doesn't excite you, then I think it's, um, then it becomes like a job and, uh, I mean, and this is, I say this to my son too, just to find like what your passion is, is, is very important so that like your career doesn't become just a job, you know, that it becomes really a, a way you express yourself. So in some ways, I mean, I feel like I've been lucky, but when I did this in Turkey, not many people were going to school for film or not many women. I mean, it was really, thank God that my mother was extremely supportive. Uh, I think a lot of people thought she was crazy <laughs> to, to be, you know, to support me in this, but, um, but I'm really happy because I still find it exciting. I get excited about new projects and it just really excites me. So I'm happy about that. So we have two more questions and we're okay. uh, coming to the end uh, of our program. You mentioned that you attended Robert College for high school. I was just curious, what you, do you think it prepared you well? I mean, I loved Robert College. Of course, it, back then it was like we entered when we were like 12 or 13 or something and then we studied like for seven years. So it it was a now you're like much older you're like almost 14 15 when you enter uh you enter high school i loved it it was great it was really a school that um you know the turkish education system is mostly about um uh, about memorizing and then regurgitating you know regurgitating the information but Robert College was really a place where they thought they taught us to question and to think for ourselves. And they had a great theater, um, you know, clubs. And it really, uh, I think that being there, going to that school, really gave me this passion of, you know, writing, directing um, theater and film. I was also, when I was at Robert College, I was the editor in chief of the newspaper there called the Bosphorus Chronicle. So I think that my plan B would have been journalism, most likely. Um, uh, so yeah, but I guess I just ended up doing plan A. <laughs> Well, I would like to thank Binur for this very sincere and open conversation, um, for answering all the questions so openly. We really appreciate it. So if you guys can turn your cameras on, we can take a picture together. Okay. <laughs> I see. Okay. Ready. People are slowly turning on their cameras. Yes. Great. So smile. <laughs> ah, excellent. And guys, thank you, thank you, thank so, you much. so much. 
Thank you. I just Bruno. wanted to say thank you and really best of luck to all of you. I know that this is a interesting times and it's really been very tough, I'm sure, for all of you with COVID and, and Zoom and doing school from Zoom. And it's just uh, challenging times, but I really wish all of you the best and, and uh, I hope you do well. <laughs> Thank you, Binur.